Is it possible that some people are actually born more susceptible to persuasion than others? Marketers and choice architects, stick with me until the end. I'm going to take you on a wild science ride, and at the end of the video, I promise I'm going to explain why it matters to you. Imagine being part of a groundbreaking study where a simple sugar pill miraculously improves your chronic condition, a condition that has been a part of your life for years. This isn't a scene from a sci-fi movie, it's real. I'm Andrew Bagley, president of an award-winning creative agency. Today I'm gonna to share with you the fascinating world of placebos, our genetic makeup, and how these elements intertwine to shape our behavior and perceptions. If you're a behavior change professional, knowledge about placebos is a powerful tool to have on hand. Stay tuned till the end of the video, and I'll show you how to find out if your genes make you more susceptible to the placebo effect, and even hypnosis. One of the most famous placebo stories involves a patient known as Mr. Wright, who was suffering from advanced cancer in the 1950s. Doctors gave Mr. Wright a then experimental drug called Cribozin, believing it would cure him. His tumor shrank dramatically, and he experienced a miraculous recovery. However, when reports emerged doubting the efficacy of the drug, Mr. Wright's cancer returned. His doctors, knowing the drug was being questioned, decided to inject Mr. Wright with what they claimed was a newer, more potent version of the drug, but it was actually just saline water. Again, Mr. Wright's tumor shrank, and he experienced significant recovery. Several months later, the American Medical Association issued a formal statement officially labeling the drug as useless. And what happened to Mr. Wright? Yep. His tumors returned and he died shortly thereafter. Mr. Wright's story underscores the power of influence of belief and expectation on physical health. Now here's the crazy part. Scientists think that some of us are more susceptible to the placebo effect than others. The reason might be our genes, specifically the COMT gene, which plays a role in how we metabolize dopamine in our brain. Let's go a little deeper. There are three main variants of the COMT gene, Valval, Valmet, and Metmet. Each genotype affects our dopamine levels differently, and therefore our susceptibility to the placebo effect and hypnosis. Researchers estimate that about 25% of us have the MET-MET genotype, which is the most susceptible to the placebo effect. On the other end, about 25% of people have the VAL-VAL genotype, which makes them least susceptible. And the remaining 50% have the VAL-MET genotype, putting them somewhere in between both ends. This means that a significant portion of the population could be more open to the power of suggestion than others, whether through a placebo in a clinical trial or soothing words of a hypnotist. The relationship between our genetics and psychology doesn't end there. Research also shows that someone with a higher dopamine level might be more prone to optimism bias. That is, they're more likely to see the world through rose-colored glasses. Although the science is still evolving, these insights give us a glimpse into how deeply our genes can influence our perceptions and decisions. The story of placebos and our genetic predisposition to them opens up broader questions about the nature of healing, perception, and even reality itself. It shows us that our bodies and minds are not just passive recipients of external inputs, but active participants in our health and experiences. So what does this mean for you? It means that by understanding your genetic makeup, you can better understand yourself, your behaviors, and how you interact with the world. For you marketers and choice architects, I promise you I would connect this nerdy science back to you. People want to believe that they are in control of their decisions and that environments and advertisements don't affect them. Unfortunately, those people are wrong. All of us are influenced. And it's not much of a stretch to assume that the 25 to 75% of people that are highly susceptible to placebo and hypnosis are also highly influenced by environments, infomercials, billboards, music, and other persuasive message. This places an enormous ethical responsibility on your shoulders. That's why I insist that everyone who takes my course and gets certified also gets educated on the ethics and ethical frameworks that they can use to responsibly use the skills that they learn. If you're interested in learning more, head over to my website and sign up to get notified when spots open for my next course.